Hello everyone! Hello, hello! How are you? Goodness me! Some people have already been waiting for quite a long time. It was three o'clock, so... <laughs> okay, so I am back in my kitchen! Woohoo! <laughs> And I am going to be, hi Hager, hi Charlotte, I am going to be making scones today. So, I have made scones during the week as well because Karen came to visit. It was a socially distanced visit. Um, she she uh, sort of arrived, I put the table and chairs outside and she sat there and we sort of, I didn't sort of try to cross to the other side of the table. Uh, but yeah, so we uh, tried out the recipe because I have several and one recipe is the sort of the best one. Hi Alicia, hi Amy. But um, yeah, for some reason it was incomplete in my book. I don't know why, <laughs> but I've worked it all out again. So there we go. So I am all set up. Yes, we will do it again. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to sit close to each other then <laughs> and go for that walk. We just started chattering and we just did not get a chance to go for a walk. Can you believe that? Anyway, so I've got the oven warming up. I've just boiled the water. That's why I was three seconds late because I wanted to wait for the kettle to finish. And I am going to make myself a cup of tea first, as usual, okay? Uh, so let's put the honey in. Honey in my tea. So then I don't have to have sugar, see? Then, blind dip tea blind dip and it's rose so yeah it's going it's getting there there is less tea. there is definitely less tea in there and I um, otherwise I would not have had it you know I would not have drank them so this is working out really well so here we go A rose yes it's one of my favorites this in and let's just add some water to that there we go okay, let me put that here so it's sort of a little bit I'll put it there so it's a little bit out of the way <laughs> okay so I have everything ready and I suggest I'm going to start with the scones because then we'll have to wait a little bit, um, you know, for them to bake so I can show you the result. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I have been filming today, so um, I am going to take off my rings because I don't want to get them, um, you know, doughy. But also, I forgot to plug in my phone. So in a moment, hi, dag mama. Uh, in a moment, I might just have to plug in the electricity into the phone, okay? So, just be warned. <laughs> okay, so I have here my bowl, okay? And I have here, let's start with the flour. In my sieve, I think, I have um, 225 grams of self-raising flour. Now this flour is pre-sieved but um, I am going to sieve it again because I'm going to put baking powder in and then if you sieve it again then you know it's all mixed in really well. Then I have here 50 grams of butter. As you can see I've cubed it and I did this about half an hour ago so it's a little bit softer than it would be straight from the fridge. Okay. Now, um, I, um, I was going to say something and I forgot now. Flour, yeah, butter, okay. Baking powder, okay. So I've got baking powder. I have my measurements here. Um, this is a teaspoon, this is a soup spoon. So I'm going to add one soup spoon of baking powder. 
and I'm going to add that to my flour. So let me just do that here. Oh, there we go. So that's quite a bit, mm, a little bit less, you know, sort of depending on what you think, not quite a whole teaspoon. There we go. So that goes in there. And then when you sieve it, it all goes um, under really well. So there we go. And so I'm going to sieve that into here. I have to take the lid off. Look, the lid underneath comes off. See, so this is already sieved. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Look, 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 look. <laughs> I love doing that. everywhere yeah this is a uh, Tupperware one unfortunately I always used to have the metal one but it broke and then when they had one from Tupperware I had to have that one yeah I love doing this but to be honest I don't always now sieve it um, because it says um, on the flour it says, hang on a minute, let me show you, pre-sieved, I, um, I no longer sieve it, I used to sieve it all the time, okay, so I used to sieve it all the time, now that I, it says pre-sieved, I don't anymore, but I do miss it, and I do sometimes still do it, because I do like doing it, there you go. So we've got the flour in the bowl and now we are going to add the butter to that. Just pop it in, I'll show you. There we go. Okay, so it looks like this. Yeah, and now comes that moment. <laughs> so I put ready 150 milliliters of milk okay you can use a little bit of if you have a little bit of cream you can but um, it's very um, rich when you use cream the scones will be a lot better if you or not better but a bit lighter and not so rich in your tummy um, if you don't use cream so with the milk I just love um, you know I love it because they're lighter okay so this is what I was going to say now comes the moment when the hands have to go in you know and you have to sort of go get past that moment of all the flour getting under your nails Ooh, I hate that um, am I ready for yeah I am ready so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you down like this see like before so you can see what I'm doing I can't really see what you're saying but there we go <laughs> so here we have the flower the hands go in you and what you need to be doing is look can you see what i'm doing i'm squeezing those little cubes of butter so that they start adhering to the flour so you've got the cube then you go like this with your fingers squeeze it squeeze it okay but of course with more flour and this is something that you have to keep doing oh yeah mm. <laughs> I mean I don't mind but it's just that initial moment of knowing that you've got all that flour under your hands <laughs> under your nails There we go, see? Yeah, all my things are Tupperware as well. I really love it. And um, of course in England you can't get it now, but I used to buy it in Belgium. So there you go. So doing this sort of um, motion. And can you see, it's now sort of going from flour and butter it's going to that sort of texture 
that resembles breadcrumbs. And that's what you want. Now keep your hands light, keep coming up and putting air in your flour and butter mixture. This takes a little while because it's okay to have small bits of butter still, but not big things. So the more, the more dough you're going to make, the longer this is going to take because you'll have more flour and butter. Uh, that's what I wanted to say earlier. This is not going to make very many scones, okay? But it's better to do it properly and not make too many. There we go. Okay, so I think this, let me just show you a little bit closer up. This is sort of the consistency that it should look like. You know, like breadcrumbs. If there is some butter still left here and there, that's fine. That doesn't matter too much. Okay, right, so hands are like this, that's fine. <laughs> now we are going to add the milk, but we are not going to add all the milk, right? I always leave a little bit in the bottom here because A, I use it to go over the top of the scones, but also I don't want to... Um, make it too wet to start with so let's pour in most of the milk but not all of it okay now i'm going to use a knife to combine i don't want to rub anymore i don't want to knead anymore i just need to combine and doing it with a knife is the way to get it to combine without actually how should I say it? Say it, process it more, you know? So look, it's getting there. I am going to need a bit more milk, but again, I am not pour pouring everything in. I need to keep a tiny bit. There we go. Yeah, see, that is coming together now. Okay, so as you can see, it's now yeah, into one ball, slightly sticky on the outside, and that's perfect. So now you're going to get your flour. Oh, oh I'm going to get the box covered in it, never mind. And you're going to put some flour on your work surface. and tip the dough onto that. There we go. Scrape out some of the little bits here. There we go. Put this to the side. Okay. Now, you do not need to knead this anymore. All you need to do is shape it. So, just gently pat it down turn it over again pat it down again right that's it i think that's it right so that's all you need to do it's about what two one and a half inches thick that's sort of what you need okay now this is i'll show you my other cutters in a moment okay this is the cutter I'm going to use today. So just get some flour and rub. It's not going to stay on there very much, but just to, you know, make sure it's not going to stick. And now I'm going to cut out my scones. See? There we are. So this is sort of about the thickness that you want. This is sort of the size. I always, this is the same cutter as I used for my biscuits. I really like this shape. It's a nice size. There we go, see? And, oh no, I can't make another one from that one. So then I just reshape it. I 
There we go. It doesn't matter if it's not properly together or anything. My cutter is a little bit sticky, so I'm just going to go over the edge like that, bit of flour, making sure it's sticky, not sticky. <laughs> there we go. Okay, there we are. And then the last one, I sort of shape that and I put it in the cutter. <laughs> in it. There we go. And then I squash it down and that makes another perfectly round scone. There we go. Right. Now I'm going to get out, you know I do it on my stone here, right? So let me just put this there, lift them, oh you can't see that, hang on, can you see it now? <laughs> lift them onto my stone, well you can put them in there, you know, sort of first go as well, you know, after you've cut them, there we go, okay. Now we've got this little bit of milk left over, I'm going to use my brush and I'm go just going to paint the top of the scones with my milk. Now some people use an egg, I am too stingy to use an, a whole egg <laughs> for this. <laughs> I really don't want to waste an egg just to sort of, um, you know, paint the tops of my scones because I might not use the rest of the egg to be, you know, and what do you do with it then? And that's just a waste, okay? So, five scones, these are ready for the oven. I've got my oven on, let me just put up the camera again, I've got my oven, there we are, I'm back, I've got my oven on 180 and they'll be in there for about 15 minutes, so if somebody can put a timer on please, so I can just keep talking. <laughs> I know, I know, I, Hager, I used to, uh, thank you, Alicia, I used to wear gloves, but yeah, somehow I ran out and I sort of never purchased, purchased them again. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to rearrange my oven first because I grilled something earlier. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> Just let's get them in the oven. That goes here. And this goes in there. Right, there we are. Good. Okay, let me just wash my hands now. Oh my goodness. And get all that dough out from under my nails. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, meat and chicken. I, um, I use scissors to cut that. And that helps enormously because then that means you don't have to handle it so much. I use um, I use um, Tupperware scissors, which actually come apart. And yeah, oh, I know fish. Ugh, that's why I don't I don't cook fish at all. No. Nope. Unless I can just open a frozen thing. Ugh. Right, okay, so let me just show you a couple of things. <laughs> yeah, so what I use for for dicing or for, um, you know, chicken, I'll use a fork and then I'll cut it. See? And then like, choo -choo, like that, choo -choo, and it works. And look, these scissors go in the dishwasher and they come apart so they're clean, so they're hygienically clean, so they don't have the place here near the, um, you know, near the thing where it can't be cleaned. So, so this is special for being able to um, cut your meat. Anyway. <laughs> you need those scissors. <laughs> anyway, so um, I used this cutter today and it goes with this as well. So this is a set which I got quite a while ago and it's like more like a tower building thing. 
So this is like if you have a nice sort of presentation on a plate, you can put mash in there and then put, you know, sort of whatever. So this is more for um, presentation, but also I use them as cutters because they have got a little bit of an edge here for being able to use as cutters. And I like this size. See, this is the perfect size for those biscuits that we made last week, but also for the scones. Okay, well, not last week, but um, you know, two weeks ago. I have no idea, Linda. I have no idea. Just these, on the other hand, are proper scone cutters. I bought these, and they're rusty now. Even look at that. I bought these how long ago? Maybe twenty years ago. And um, I used to spend my summers in Dorset. And I used to, um, I made these friends and they had a bed and breakfast. And this recipe that we're using today is her recipe. It's Shirley's recipe. And she used to make these to welcome her guests. And she sent me into town one day. She said, right, you've got to go and buy your own scone cutters because obviously, you know, I, you need them. You need to have them as well. And she sent me to this little shop. This was in Shaftesbury in Dorset. And she sent me to the to the hardware shop in town. That was it. You know, it was sort of a small town. There was one shop. And these are the ones I bought. And I've had them ever since. Obviously, I've used them so much. And this is the more sort of traditional fluted sides that you get when you um, have scones um, sort of you know in England um, a lot of people will still use these fluted ones but like I said I'm now sort of using these ones and I'm saving these um, so that they don't get you know ruined but I mean obviously they won't won't but yeah it's just so nice to have these I've had them for a long time and yeah I, I always like the middle one as well which is about let me show you is about the same size as this one okay um it must be a triangle of triangular scones that must be a different type of whatever it is uh scones um yeah <laughs> uh scones are always round um or you know fluted or plain but um I've had square scones as well where I couldn't I don't know whether I made them but you know sometimes if you can't find your cutters then you just cut them with a knife very gently and that's it um, yes so we also bought them in a shop in Canterbury uh, there was this one uh, kitchen hardware shop I think it was called kitchen traders my mum and I never ever went into that shop ever we never went into that but we always came home with a bag full of stuff from that shop <laughs> before we left we were like no we're not going in that shop we're not going in thank you alicia we're not going in the shop first thing we did into that shop we bought loads of stuff one thing that i bought there in canterbury was this one it's a double-edged um spatula really handy very very handy okay so then another thing i need to say is hi cindy hi everyone i never put fruit in my scones for some reason i personally don't like it i like my scones plain so that's why obviously my recipe is without any but um a lot of people put raisins in or um orange peel or you can have, I mean, the, the cafe where Karen and I normally go for our afternoon tea um, has lavender and honey scum, scones and they were gorgeous. I mean, yes, I'll have that. But yeah, raisins, no, that's not for me. Anyway, let me have a look in the oven. Oh, it's going well. It's going well. Okay, so now yes indeed plain scones because we're going to have them with jam um, and clotted cream you don't want to you know add to that again right okay so charlotte yes that is the question do we put the cream first and then the jam or the jam first and then the cream so let me get the cream out i have strawberry jam 
and clotted cream. Now, <laughs> this is the leftover of the jam from when Karen was here. It was a full pot. And this is a pack of clotted cream. This is the brand of the clotted cream that I can buy here um, in my uh, shop, in my normal uh, sh uh, supermarket. And this is the one that is um, sold at Marks and Spencers, but it's the same, it's the same family, it's the same farmers, sort of dairy farmers who make this, okay? So it says the Rodda family, and so this is the brand, the Rodda family, okay? Let me just open it for you. Now, what is clotted cream, okay? Clotted cream is full fat cream that's been, how should I say it, almost like evaporated. So what you do is you, 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 um, you heat it in the oven for like a low temperature all night and then it gets this crust on top where it's sort of, the, the liquid has evaporated. So this is pure sort of like butter, thick, thick cream. Obviously, I haven't put it in the oven. I buy it like this, but you can make it um, yourself by putting cream in a big dish with a lot of surface. And then, hi there, Scott. And uh, yeah, with a lot of surface, and then you can leave that overnight in the fridge, in the oven, in the oven at 70 degrees or something, and then it will sort of dry out over the top and it will condense. Um, but this one I bought, obviously, and as you can see, I don't know whether I can show you, let me just get a spoon. Look, if you go into it, you can see there's the cream underneath and then there's sort of that crusty bit on the top. See? So that is clotted cream. And then of course we've got the jam. And I also bought this one uh, earlier, strawberry jam as well. Okay, so I like strawberry jam or raspberry, but I can't find any raspberry. All the shelves are empty. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. So, yeah, we're going to have to sort out how we are going to eat these scones because, of course, um, there's two ways of eating it. You have your scone and you put your cream on and then the jam or do it the other way around where you put the jam and then the cream so it depends what you prefer but the way I have been shown was to actually put only the amount of jam and cream on your scone that you're going to bite off. So you have your plate and on that plate you then put your sort of a heaped teaspoon of jam and a heaped teaspoon of cream and then you have your scone and then you just take it very daintily for each bite. See this is how my friend from Dorset taught me how to eat them. Very important. Right, let's get a plate. I'm getting a plastic plate just in case I drop it. <laughs> right, so we've got the cream. And that's never going to come off my. <laughs> never going to come off my. Oh well, look, I'm being very naughty now, but there we go. It's for me. <laughs> okay, so that's our cream. Let me get another spoon for. Yes, croissants are nice as well. There we go. That's the jam. So this is your plate, okay? And um, in a moment I shall put the scone on. Of course we have to wait a little while 
for it to cool down. But unfortunately, I have noticed. Thank you, Alicia. Battery low, so I'm going to have to plug in. Sorry, I shall talk louder. Okay. <laughs> Let me just show you in the oven. There we go. Let's see if you can see it. Let me have a look. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, getting there. Getting there. They are definitely getting there. So I'm just going to, yes, I mean, some of these, I mean, obviously jam, you can, you know, um, obviously you can use any jam, basically. Uh, if you cannot get um, clotted cream, what I used to do is just buy normal cream and just whip it up. And then I'd have sort of whipped cream um, I would put some sugar in to make it sort of a little bit sweeter, but yeah, unfortunately, clotted cream is 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 something that's just you cannot describe really sort of almost what it is and how it tastes. But it is tasty. It is really tasty, and it is quite unique. So it unfortunately it doesn't um, travel well so you need to sort of you know keep it cold and everything so it's not so easy to export it all over the world um, so if you do get a chance to coming to the UK and having cream cream you know clotted cream then you know oh don't worry Beth I'm okay I'm okay it's it's fine it's fine <laughs> I wanted to show you um, and it's fine to open it in this case um, I have other cakes that I won't open the door for but this one it'll survive it's fine <laughs> let me go and have another look yeah they just need a little bit of color so I had the oven a little bit light earlier so we'll just leave it in for a couple of minutes longer, Alicia. Is that okay? <laughs> She's timing, so <laughs> gotta keep the timer happy. <laughs> Let's have a sip. So, no, sponge cake, yeah. Now, the reason why I have no battery on my phone was obviously because I was filming earlier and I didn't plug it in while I was filming. Yeah, two more minutes, two, three more minutes, Alicia, because they're not, mm, they're not brown yet. Um, I put the oven on 180, but it's really hard to see uh, my measurements and it must have been towards the 170. So sort of, you know, it, the, the thing is, <laughs> It's not a precise oven, this oven. This is what I'm saying, okay? Uh, yeah, thank you, Alicia. So yes, I have been filming because I have noticed that there is a pattern doing the rounds which you might be interested in. So I am trying to film it and make it this weekend so that you will have the video for it on Friday and it's going to be something yeah like i said something that's doing the rounds so hopefully uh you'll be able you'll find it easy for me you know my version you'll find it easy and you'll be able to do it we'll see <laughs> it does mean it does mean that i am going to be crocheting all night tonight so Oh no, why can't you crochet, Alicia? What's happening? Who's stopping you from crocheting? Right. No, not a project bag. 
Shall I, shall I tease you a little bit more? Oh, Julie. No, Alicia. Oh, no. Does it hurt? Is this your scorpion? Is it a pet scorpion? Oh my goodness. No. Nope. I've done that. <laughs> I'm doing a, um, a video on the mosaic technique that's done and edited. I just have to upload that. But I am doing a video on a wearable. And now she's going to go and check on her scones. Bye-bye. Oh yes, they are getting there. They're getting slightly, slightly brown. So we're getting, well, brown, golden color. We've got to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> oh well. I might as well start clearing up this mess that I've made here. Right. I'm very good at making a mess. Oh my goodness. It's all going to go in the dishwasher though. I am not even thinking about washing it up. <laughs> I mean, I know that you can... Um, you know, a, a scorpion bite only hurts. It, you'd be very unlucky if it actually inflames. But I do hope it's okay, Alicia. I do hope you'll survive. Uh, yeah, um, here, that's the thing. We, if you are going to incorporate zipper, a, a zip into crochet, that makes it really hard. So um, I think it, uh, it's better if you have a button with a flap. Okay, right, let me go and have a look at this baking in the oven. What is in the oven? Da -da! And here we are. Yeah, look, look at that. Let me just turn the oven off. I am holding this. It's really hot. There we go. Look at that. I think they are really well done. They have the perfect coloring. Okay. And I am going to put them on here. So let's just put this down on here. All right. And I need to just cool one off or all of them actually. Let's get the thing out as well. Yep, my little rack. It's gonna be hot, but it should be, it should cool off quickly. There we go. And let me just, oh, there we go. Whew. Oh, they are so light. There we go. Whew. Okay. Let me show you again. There they are. See? And they um they'll sort of naturally almost break in the middle. Yes, Karen had these the other day. Actually, I baked two batches. So um yeah. I gave her some to take home as well. But yeah, these are really, really light. I just need to wait to cool down now. This is the thing, I normally walk away now because otherwise I know I'm eating them. And it's fine to eat them warm, but not this hot. <laughs> 
So we shall have to stand here and wait. So, um, <laughs> Ellen, <laughs> we need wacht, die wind, die wind niet, you must this proberen. Now, I have five scones here. You could make them a little bit thinner, but I think this is sort of the, the height that you want. Um, the first recipe I had was using the double amounts. So that was using a lot more flour and a lot more butter. But I think, um, you know, sort of for an afternoon tea, if there's two or three people, five scones is enough because you can only eat one maybe two they are really rich and that's why I said if you use milk they're less rich they're less sort of heavy in your stomach if you use cream I can only ever eat one but if I use milk I can eat one one and a half two maybe um, so yeah that's sort of it is it is very very sort of um, filling okay so let me put this down and let me get one and get this one, okay. So we have our plate ready with our jam and our cream. And how shall I do this? I can't put it here, can I? So what I do normally is you sort of, even with your hands, I never cut it with, I never sort of, hard to do it while you're actually holding the plate as well. Let me just show you. Ah, oh, they're still too warm. Too warm. Doing this really carefully because they are too warm still. But look, see, this is how you break them open. Okay, so no knife. And then jam on the bit that you're going to bite off then cream on top of that only a tiny bit of cream tiny bit of cream then is it okay it's not too hot mm. Very nice, very nice indeed. And you know, you only need milk, self-raising flour, a bit of baking powder, and butter. So generally, I think you have that in the house. Um, and then of course, yes, it's the cream of course, isn't it? The cream does make a big difference. Um, for the taste obviously um, but of course I think you know if you've spent all this time making them and everything you know baking them I don't know whether they are milk brooches um, I think milk brooches are um, no they're different yeah clotted cream This is what I use. Normally, I would have gone. So this is the the clotted cream I can buy in the shop. But normally, I would have gone to our indoor market here in Exmouth. And I have yeah, I'm too busy eating. <laughs> um, there's a lady there, and she sells 
clotted cream just sort of like in really big tubs and you sort of say I want 500 grams and she just scrapes it out and puts it in a pot. That clotted cream is divine. Um, it's better than this one obviously. I don't know how they make it. I think she has, you know, she sells milk, uh, eggs and stuff and also um, bacon and some pork pies and things like that. So she's, um, you know, she has probably got a supplier a farm or a dairy farm or wherever she gets it from direct and yeah it is such nice clotted cream it's amazing um but obviously now it's closed because obviously you know the the market was an open area as an open space indoors uh but yeah with the you know with the situation we needed to sort of it need to be closed and so this is the clotted cream that i can buy now which um yeah it's fine it's but it still is not as good as the one that i normally buy but there we go okay <laughs> i'm just gonna go and eat some more i'll just leave you to entertain yourselves i think <laughs> put some more on here oh i'm mixing it up now Str jam and cream at the same time oh well let's see if I can get this in my mouth without making a fool of myself <laughs> hey Ellen die zijn ook lekker hè ik lust dat ook heel graag hoor gewone dingetjes maar dat is natuurlijk iets speciaals hè I'm very wild yes oh my goodness I can't this is break it's too hot you see should have waited a little bit longer. Look. <laughs> this is too funny. <laughs> anyway, right, I'm up. Oh. Anya, put it down. Right, just put it down. This is the thing. You cannot stop eating it. <sighs> right, there we go. Okay, that's that. So, scones with clotted cream. I hope you enjoyed me showing you how to make it. It is really easy, as you can see. I know what am I gonna do with those four any suggestions <laughs> well I've got um yeah afternoon tea in the hotel yeah <laughs> well, no I'm not gonna tell Dirk I've already had some <laughs> I'll probably have one more and then I'll have another one for breakfast tomorrow. See? You don't have to keep them for the afternoon. You can eat them for breakfast or any time you want. <laughs> if you've made them yourself, you can eat them whenever you want. <laughs> so I am now, obviously, I'm going to say goodbye really soon because I have crocheting to do. I have a video to film, I have a pattern to write and yes I want to make sure that I finish it this weekend because I want to publish it next week so that you can make it. So I am so very sorry but I'm going to have to go. <laughs> these wonderful scones here I've got an empty sofa and I am just going to sit there and crochet <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little session do go to the blog because the pattern uh, the recipe the recipe is already there for the um, 
scones okay and there's also a little bit of explanation about clotted cream and you know sort of where I got this recipe from so I do hope you enjoy that blog post blog post goodness me uh, and uh, yeah be there tomorrow for the live because not only am I um, asking you for some suggestions on what kind of tutorials you would like me to make okay so do have a think have a think of what kind of things you would like to make what kind of things you would like me to do a tutorial on because I am opening up my list to all of you okay and um, you know don't make any suggestions now don't make it now keep them for tomorrow keep them for tomorrow think of them uh, and you know then tomorrow during the live we'll have a little talk about the next upcoming tutorials but one of them is going to be a wearable that is doing the rounds and that everybody is interested in and I am going to be making my own version of it so there you go I will see you tomorrow evening bye